from the nation's capital, the Conservative Caucus presents Conservative Roundtable, an in-depth look at today's most important issues. Welcome to Conservative Roundtable. I'm Howard Phillips, Chairman of the Conservative Caucus, which sponsors these broadcasts now being televised all over America and available on YouTube. Our special guest is not Marlon Brando, but it's another godfather. It's Richard Vigory, the godfather of the conservative movement. And Richard, we're so glad that you're here. Always a pleasure. Howard. And let me begin by asking you whether you agree with Newt Gingrich that uh, Obama's Supreme Court nominee should withdraw because she's a bigot. And she said things that any uh, Caucasian uh, would have uh, been ruined if they said. Well, Howard, she certainly has made uh, bigoted, uh, racist comments, but quite frankly, I would uh, hope that she would stay in the race for four or five months. Uh, this is an enormous uh, teaching opportunity for conservatives. It's been since, what, 1993, 94, since we've had a major high-profile ideological debate in this country between the left and the right. And conservatives almost never lose those battles. And what was that debate? Health insurance? Well, well it was health insurance under the early Clinton years. It was taxes. It was gun control. It was multiple issues that the Clintons uh, threw on the table there. And conservatives almost never lose those battles. We may lose the legislative vote, uh, but over the long term, we win. You remember very well Panama Canal, uh, where the entire conservative movement was united uh, in a high-profile debate. We lost the, uh, the vote in the Senate, but in the next two elections, 1978, 1980, of the 21 senators who voted uh, on that uh, bill on the giveaway of the Panama Canal, 20 of them were Democrats that were defeated who had voted with Jimmy Carter. Republicans lost one. Well, I still have a dishonor roll uh, <laughs> listing yep. those who betrayed us. So, so we lost the short issue. run, but we run uh, one in the long term. And I think... Of course, 78 was a good year in which there were 13 liberals who were defeated in that one year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think... But, the road back for conservatives, the road back for the Republican Party, if you would, runs right through this nomination. This nomination is just key to the relaunching of the conservative movement, to uh, any uh, effort uh, on the successful on the Republican part to come back. If they want to be successful in defeating uh, the Obama health care, cap and trade, they've got to uh, start with this uh, nomination battle here. And... Um what role do you think will be played by Jeff Sessions and the other Republicans on the Judiciary Committee? Well, for uh, conservatives, it's just huge, Howard, that Jeff Sessions is the uh, rep ranking. He's already Republican. voted against her once. Yes, he has. <laughs> when she was up no, for another he, uh, appointment. He is very, very good. We, we could not have done better. And that's, uh, for the Republicans, a, a huge benefit of uh, our inspector <laughs> switching sides. You know, it allowed people Jeff say this hurt the GOP. I think it helped it. I, I, I agree. I, absolutely. I agree. Be gone, Arlen. Be gone. <laughs> absolutely. Well, why do you think Tom Ridge decided here too long. Not, not to run for the Senate? Uh, he saw the handwriting on the wall. I think uh, Pat Toomey is a very strong candidate, a strong conservative, and I think uh, he uh, recognizes that he probably uh, would have... Uh, either lost in the primary or had a very, very tough uh, battle for 15 months. I just don't think he uh, wanted it. We had the stomach for it. How confident is uh, Specter of winning the Democratic nomination? Could he be taken there? He, he uh, may, but it would be uh, unlikely, uh, unlikely. I think that uh, the Democrats are going to come together. They're going to put an enormous amount of pressure on him to switch on cord check and to switch here and there. And at the end of the day, they're going to go with Specter. Specter is a survivor. You don't think the admiral, who's a congressman from Pennsylvania, will ultimately won and mount an effective challenge? Well, he, he, he may uh, run. He may mount an effective challenge. But at the end of the day, I think the nomination is go Democratic nomination is going to go to Specter. And I think Toomey has got a real shot uh, at being uh, the senator from Pennsylvania. And uh, looking around the country, in what other states are Republicans well-positioned to pick up Senate seats? Well, uh, 
You know, the governors uh, offer a better opportunity. Uh, senators uh, is, uh, is slimmer pickings, uh, Howard. But uh, in this year, uh, I think the Republicans are looking real good in Virginia and, and pretty good in, in New Jersey. Uh, next year, uh, J.C. Watts may run for governor in, in Oklahoma. And uh, there, there's some other uh, possibilities out there that I haven't... Uh, well, you, you know, you've got a race in... Uh Florida, where the ah, where, where the uh, leadership of the party nationally, John Cornyn, has tapped uh, Governor Christ, uh, but there's a very strong conservative opposing Christ in the primary, and Christ takes the uh, Colin Powell Tom Ridge position on abortion and gay rights. And uh, what chance, in your view, is there that he might be upset? Oh, I uh, I would bet on it. I think uh, that uh, the 37 year old Hispanic, uh, former Speaker of the House of Representatives in Florida, Marco Rubino, I think he can take uh, Chris. Howard, what an outrage that Republicans uh, raise hundreds of millions of dollars from conservatives, sending out all these fundraising letters and phone calls, uh, making a strong conservative pitch. Then they take the money that conservatives give and go into states like Pennsylvania six years ago and defeat Pat Toomey and elect Arlen Specter. With the help of, uh, of Senator Santorum yes. and George Bush. Exactly, and Karl Rove and, and lots yeah. of other uh, Republicans out there. But uh, now they're going to take uh, that money f that conservatives gave to elect conservatives, and they're going to try to defeat a conservative, Marco Rubino, and that's just an outrage. And I think they're going to pay a dear price uh, for that. Now, Tom Ridge and Colin Powell and others have said that uh, the base of the GOP is too narrow. You've got to expand the base. You've got to have a bigger tent. Uh, what, do, what ought Republicans do uh, with respect to base broadening? Because there are so many people in the party elites, in the party donor tent, uh, who are pro-abortion, uh, pro-special rights for sodomites, who are for some form of gay marriage. Um, how should the Republican Party handle that? Well, they start with ignoring the advice of Colin Powell and Tom Ridge. Uh, you know, I don't know how much further left they think the Republican Party should go. Uh, the Republican Party uh, abandoned its conservative uh, base. As, as you know, Howard, I wrote a book a few years ago called Conservatives Betrayed how George W. Bush and other big government Republicans hijacked the conservative cause. Uh, just like his father, uh, he lied to the American people. Uh, they, his father said, you know, trust me, I'm a conservative. And uh, if I'm ever fortunate enough to be uh, president, I'll govern as a conservative. Well, that was a lie. And, and the same with uh, his uh, son, George W. Bush. Uh, they governed left of center, massively expanded government. It con ignored almost all the conservative issues. In the second term of Bush's administration, uh, uh, they appointed two, and only two conservatives to the executive branch, uh, John Bolton and Jim Nicholson, and both of those were gone in, in fairly short order. So uh, Bolton was ambassador to it, the U.N. Yeah, and Jim Nicholson and, at Veterans Administration. Right. Uh, two so, very outstanding men. Absolutely. But beyond that, the administration was Fortune 500, Wall Street, corporate America types. And so I don't know what Colin Powell and Tom Ridge have in mind. We just become a clone of the Democratic Party. The problem is that they abandoned the conservative base, and uh, that's why they're, uh, they're losing uh, people who self-identify as Republicans. Uh, Kellyanne Conway, a friend of ours, Howard, uh, did a poll, uh, exit poll, on Election Day last November. Four words, Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal. The most unpopular word was Republican. The most popular word was conservative. People still identify with us as conservatives. My view has been that the federal election law amendments of 1974 and the McCain-Feingold bill concentrated too much power in those who control the apparatus of the major parties. And uh, that gives people like John Cornyn uh, the ability to decide where the money will go and uh, who will be favored or who will benefit in a party primary. Uh, what can be done to break up the financial control of the Republican Party by people who are pro-abortion, who are uh, soft on sodomy and other issues? Well, Howard, going forward, I think it's very important 
for conservatives to uh, look to themselves for the new leadership. We are the leadership we've been waiting for. And, and to express that leadership, uh, I think we need to withhold contributions from... I was just going to ask you. Yeah. You uh, have clients who use direct mail. Are you recommending that your clients contact uh, their constituents urging that they not contribute directly to the Republican Party but that they give money to conservative candidates only? Well, uh, we don't have PACs. Uh, we have uh, clients that are uh, uh, 501c3, c4. They do lobbying, educational work, etc. But I am uh, engaged in a big effort. Uh, I read an op-ed piece in the L.A. Times a few weeks ago, in the Washington Times a few weeks ago, and all my uh, writings, books, uh, emails. I'm urging people not to give to any of the re national Republican committees and not give to most state Republican committees because most of those are not controlled by conservatives. And don't give to any establishment Republican candidate. Hold your contributions for only principled conservative organizations and principled conservative candidates. We're going to have to take a break. We'll be back after these messages with Richard Vigory of American Target Advertising and the author of uh, an important book, The New Right, We're Ready to Lead. Stay with us. Congressman Tom Tancredo. You know, I just returned from a hearing on the southern border uh, in a place called Brownsville, Texas. One of the participants in the hearing told us that uh, for them, a border really doesn't exist between the United States and Mexico. Well, unfortunately, a lot of people have that attitude that there are no such things as borders, that they really don't matter, that they're just lines on a map and nobody should pay attention to them, and that we're all just residents of the North American continent. Well, you know what? That's baloney. It's baloney, but only if you will do something about it to prove to the people in, of this country, and especially to your elected officials, that you know borders matter. That you know the sovereignty of this country is at risk, and that you will take action to make sure that they understand it. That action is best taken by calling your local talk radio stations, writing letters to the editor, and of course, letting members of Congress know that you know. That's the best thing. It's their hoping, as a matter of fact, that no one really picks up on this issue of um, a, a North American trade association that essentially eliminates borders. But uh, the fact is it's happening. Uh, you can see parts of it all of the time. So it's something that we need to stop. Uh, America, and I mean the United States of America, not the continent, but the United States of America is at stake. Do your part. Welcome back. I'm Howard Phillips, chairman of the Conservative Caucus, which sponsors Conservative Roundtable. And our special guest is Richard Vigory, the, one of the key leaders in the conservative movement, which began to flourish in the 1970s. I first met Richard Vigory when he was a candidate to be executive director of Young Americans for Freedom in 1961, and I voted against him. <laughs> but he got the job anyway. <laughs> And we became, that wasn't the only time you voted against me, Howard. <laughs> but, we became, but we became best buddies. We became friends anyway. Now, Richard, I think uh, 2010 could be a very good year for the Republican Party. I think there could be a great many, quote-unquote, conservatives elected to the Senate and the House. Back in the 70s and 80s, before Gingrich became Speaker, we met with Gingrich and others at your home, and talk strategy and so forth and so on. And when our friends came to power, they forgot who we were. Uh, what can we do now to train the people and lock in to a real conservative constitutional agenda 
who might be elected in uh, 2010. Howard, I'm okay with the if if they forget me. <laughs> uh, that's just not a big deal, and I know it doesn't concern you either. But what does concern us is they forget the principles that they ran on, the principles that elected them to office. That is concerning, and it's concerning to what do Americans. We do? What do we do to hold them to a standard? What, what we do, Howard, is... Uh, you were talking about uh, breakfast uh, at my home, and we met for maybe eight years or so every Wednesday for a couple of hours. Yourself, me, Paul Weirich, uh Terry, Terry Dolan, Dolan, Ed, Ed Fuller, Fuller, Morton Blackwell. Others. Every now and then, Pat Buchanan. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then we were working with 20, 20, 30 other of our colleagues around the country who couldn't come. Uh, make it, and then there was a period of time for maybe 18 months or so where we'd reconvene the same group in the morning uh, and get together with uh, the backbenchers, Newt Gingrich, Vin Weber, Bob Walker, and other congressmen, and we'd plot and plan to the extent that there was anything that uh, Hillary referred to as uh, the vast right-wing conspiracy. In those days, that that was it. But what we did, that we said, Howard, those of us around that table. And our friends around the country who couldn't uh, make it into town, we were the alternative to the Democrats. And that's where we are right now. The people w listening to us who share our, uh, our conservative principles should not be looking to Republican politicians for leadership. They should be looking to themselves, whether you're at the uh, precinct level, county level, state level, national level. Look to yourself, you know. Run for office, support somebody who's running for office, blog, email, uh, start an organization on an issue of concern to you, whether it's school, local property taxes, whatever it might be. We need to provide the leadership for conservatives to come to power, not Republican politicians. You've talked frequently about the third way or the third wave. What do you mean by that? The, uh, it's actually a third force, third Howard, force, uh, and uh, third wave is uh, <laughs> Clinton. <laughs> then uh, third force, I think uh, I'm writing a book about it, and uh, it'll hopefully will be out uh, this summer. And the idea is that, again, around our kitchen table, uh, we used to talk about, Paul Warwick taught us this, reverse engineer the, uh, the left. And, and we did reverse engineer and made a better uh, product than they and than they've uh, now reverse engineered us. Now it's time to look at the left again, I think. And the left, Howard, has thousands and thousands of what I call third force organizations. If they called a meeting of all their environmental groups, there'd be 340, 350 groups show up. Uh, they have consumer groups. They have race-based organizations, homosexual groups, feminist groups, uh, consumer groups, unions. Thousands, maybe tens of thousands. They all have their own agenda. They all have their own uh, uh, source of funds. They all have their own membership. And they operate independent of the political parties. But they pull everybody their way on the environmental issues, on any number of issues out there. So what I'd like to see is conservatives at the whatever level you operate on, you know, form organizations, not around necessarily politics, because most people are normal. They've got lives, you know, <laughs> they've got families. They get up in the morning worrying about the, their mortgage and their community, whatever. So identify issues of concern to you and your neighbors, your community. Get involved and organize at that level. And we have, you know, thousands and maybe tens of thousands of these organizations, like the Tea Parties out there. We're going to pull everybody our way. Richard, back in the 70s and the 60s, certainly, there was a paucity of conservative publications. And now there are dozens of newsletters, mm -hmm. dozens of magazines, dozens of uh, outlets for conservative expression. And uh, quoting Mao, we are letting a hundred flowers bloom. Is there, ought we be trying to uh, put them on the same page at least with objectives, if not with tactics. Well, Howard, you know, uh, we certainly should not. Uh, one of our strengths is that we are a bottom-up, uh, you know, philosophy. We don't uh, have uh, somebody, uh, you know, at the national level pulling strings, manipulating things like maybe the left does with the George Soros uh, type, uh, John Podesta, etc. So uh, I think that's a strength. And uh, I think as long as uh, people are, are principled, uh, I, uh, I'm comfortable with, uh, without, you know, uh, 
uh, a central coordinating uh, committee here, so to speak. And I, uh, I think that the more we have, we have dozens now, I think we need hundreds, we need thousands out there. The, the more, the better. As I said, the left has tens of thousands of unions and race-based organizations and consumer groups and feminist, homosexual groups. Uh, unfortunately, uh, a high percent of them are funded by the uh, taxpayers. Well, uh, I was just going to say that. The left has a huge financial advantage. They've got the whole federal government funding their operations. And then they've got the David Rockefellers, the George Soroses. Uh, they've got many other people with deep pockets who underwrite their agenda and their activities. If we have them, I haven't met them lately. Howard, uh, 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 yeah. uh, what can be done? Well, let me just uh, <laughs> say this. this. People may be discouraged with what I'm going to say, but they shouldn't be. Uh, we've been in this situation before, and we're not going to come back as a movement in uh, two, three, four years probably. It's going to take six, maybe ten years for conservatives to uh, to come back because, as you say, you know, we've got so much arrayed against us. Howard, you didn't begin to explain, you know, what is out there. You know what's out there, of course. Big business is against us. Wall Street, uh, the media, Hollywood, higher education, lower education, the entire government, uh, politicians uh, for the most part. I mean, every institution, perhaps, save the military, is arrayed against us. Uh, organized religion, etc. So, uh, if if you and I could select the next president of the United States, conservatives wouldn't govern America. We wouldn't have a conservative House, conservative Senate, conservative governors, state legislators. So, it's going to take uh, time. But we, we start with people getting involved and providing that leadership. And we can do it. We've done it before. You and I, Howard, have been involved at the national level three times in helping uh, conservatives take over the Republican Party. Well, maybe you weren't involved the last time, but you certainly were the first two times. Go Water 64, Reagan 80, and the Gingman's Revolution of 94. Uh, so we've done it before. This time, though, it's not just take over the Republican Party. We want to pull all of America our way. We want to influence the Democratic Party as well as the Republican Party. Now, you, uh, one of the reasons you're called the godfather is that you have been able to secure countless millions of dollars to underwrite key elements of the conservative agenda. And thank God for direct mail. Thank God for what you've been doing. What are the other sources? Are we able to use the Internet more effectively in the future than in the present to generate resources? How are we going to generate the additional resources we need? Well, that's a very good uh, point about the Internet, Howard. Uh, I... Uh you a little, you know, sorry to hear uh, a lot of people out there, conservatives, Republicans, talk about we went to sleep in the last few years. We didn't use the Internet uh, like the left did. They, they stole a big march on us, if you would. Well, that's a bunch of nonsense because the Internet basically was not available to conservatives in recent years. Uh, as you know, people... Uh, give money because they're frightened, they're concerned. If they're happy and content, they're not going to respond as, as much. And in recent years, the uh, enemies were all on the Republican side. People were angry. America was angry at uh, George Bush, Karl Rove, Tom DeLay, Denny Hastert. Uh, uh, they wanted to fire them, and you and I agreed with them. <laughs> you know, they, they were doing wrong things, bad things. And so, but now that the Obama administration has come to town, and they're scaring the dickens out of uh, much of America here, now the opportunity to use the Internet is available to us. And at a certain point, just like in the Reagan, you remember, it it got hard after Reagan was in office for a year or two to, to raise money for the remainder of his term. And I think that could happen with uh, the uh, the left here. It could be hard to uh, continue to maintain that uh, momentum. Uh, there will always be some support there, but not like it has been recently. But the support for conservatives is there. There's no shortage of money, Howard. There's a shortage of ideas. We're taking a break. We'll be right back with some final thoughts from Richard Vigory. Please stay with us. Hi, I'm United States Representative Thaddeus McCotter from Michigan's 11th Congressional District. As we enter a new millennium of hope and peril, with so many problems besetting our country and yet so many opportunities before us, it is oftentimes tempting to think that your voice doesn't matter. What can one person do to make a difference in the life of their community and their country? Well, the first thing you can do is to contact your legislator. 
you are one of the sovereign citizens of the United States. You elect your servants to work for you in Congress. Let them know what you think. Send them a letter, send them an email, call them on the phone. Your voice matters. Because if you don't raise your voice in the interest of our free republic, who will? Welcome back. I'm Howard Phillips, Chairman of the Conservative Caucus, which sponsors Conservative Roundtable. You can check us out on YouTube and as well as on the local station where you're currently viewing us. If you're interested in the kinds of issues we discuss on this program, uh, check out our website, www.conservativeusa.org. If you want, at no cost or obligation, some literature about our organization, how you can become active, uh, then uh, fax me uh, your contact information, 703 281 4108, or if you're like me, a man of the past, uh, you can snail mail me. And our address is TCC 450 Maple Avenue East, Vienna, Virginia, 22180. Now, Richard Vigory is a man of the past, the present, and the future. Give us some final thoughts. Howard, at, at, at my tender age, I feel I've got a bigger front than, than a back. There's a lot of work to do, the barbarians at the gate. Uh, I said just kind of uh, casually at the beginning of our broadcast, but I think it's very important to maybe reemphasize that if you're involved in conservative politics, uh, there's no excuse not to double and triple the size of your organization this year. Uh, it can be done uh, very uh, well if you're doing real things. Uh, this is an enormous opportunity. It all starts with this Supreme Court nomination. It's an enormous opportunity to define Obama. The Republicans have failed to define Obama in 07, 08, and 09. The conservatives now can go out there uh, and define him. The conservatives are united. Obama has united the conservatives. Every wing of the conservative movement now, including the neocons, are on board opposing this nomination. So it's an opportunity, Howard, for people to start new organizations, to educate the American people. The American people do not know what danger we're in in terms of losing our constitutional freedoms, and this is an immense educational teaching opportunity. Well, Richard, uh, it's been a pleasure having you here. This is the 35th anniversary year of the Conservative Caucus. The Conservative Caucus started in your office, and uh, you made it possible for us to get going, and I appreciate it. And I am hereby urging you to be one of the uh, members of our host committee for our 35th anniversary, which will be in October. I accept. Good. And I'll send you the bill after the show. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching us on Conservative Roundtable.